Oh boy. So if you're wondering who got canceled today, it was ContraPoints and it was by her own community. And we definitely have some things that we need to discuss today when it comes to cancel culture, outrage, hate mobs, and all that stuff. So stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community or pop culture, and try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yeah, once again, we are going to be talking about cancel culture. So those of you who have been around for a while, I talk a lot about mental health. Check this out. Like, if you are freaking out online at strangers, people you've never met, this is also a mental health issue. If you are losing sleep, if this is consuming part of your day, like, you really need to take a step back and reevaluate yourself. Like, this is one of the reasons why cancel culture is so toxic. It's not just the people getting canceled, it's everybody participating in it. Like, when I watched the members of the hate mob going at it, I'm like, what's going on in your life where you are spending this much time and emotional energy and all that. But anyways, before I jump into this topic, before I forget, my brand new book, Cancelled Inside YouTube Cancel Culture, is out now. It's available in both ebook and audiobook format, and it is down in the pinned comment, down in the description down below. So if you want to deep dive into YouTube cancel culture, I share a bit of my experience, talk about a bunch of other stories that have gone on in the YouTube community, and I try to offer some solutions. All right, so yeah, those of you who don't know, ContraPoints is a pretty, Pretty large YouTuber on the platform. Um, I don't really watch her channel, if I'm being honest, but she is a trans woman, right? And she has done a lot uh, speaking up for the LGBTQ community and everything like that, and she has some opinions that people disagree with, uh, much like someone like Blair White, right? Well, anyways, I just see my my Twitter feed this morning blowing up, everybody talking about ContraPoints. It was trending on Twitter, and I'm like, what, time out, what? What is happening? Who is being canceled today? So it all started with this series of tweets and I don't know why, but I couldn't find what she was replying to, but with her series of tweets, you can kind of see what happened, all right? So ContraPoints, uh, Natalie, she says, I'm friends with a lot of Gen Z trans people and I'm often grouped in with them because I'm very online and I transitioned not that long ago but my experience is very different. I'm not a Vanguard Zoomer tran. I sometimes feel like the last of the old school transsexuals, but I also understand why a lot of trans people who just want to blend in are frustrated with the new visibility and with the radicals. I'm feeling fearful myself about the future of trans acceptance, and I understand the desire to be invisible, tolerated, and safe. But now you go into these leftist discord Facebook groups and like 20 to 30% identify as some flavor of trans. Most of them are not conventional binary transsexuals. That seems to be the future. And if you're like me, you read that and you're like, okay, there is her opinion. But if you're like people who freak out, this caused contrapoints to leave Twitter today because she got mobbed by people of her own community. So in this video, I'm like, my opinion on this matter doesn't matter, all right? Like, but the thing is, we gotta look at people being outraged over opinions and and like how, how people tear apart their own cause from the inside. So you guys, for the love of God, for the love of God, if you are witnessing what is happening in the world today with cancel culture, with outrage and hate mobs, do yourself a favor and please go get the book, The Coddling of the American Mind by Jonathan Haidt, okay? Like I just finished that book, it was recommended by the other YouTuber, uh, Dr. Mike, phenomenal guy. And yeah, like you guys, here's one of the biggest issues in the world today. And this is something that, you know, that is one of the reasons why I got canceled, right? 
Like, you guys, just because you have different opinions doesn't mean you freak out on somebody else, okay? Like, watching people call a trans woman transphobic for that comment is mind-blowing. Like, here's, here's the thing, like, we are such selfish, self-centered creatures that we think our experience is the only experience. She was sharing her experience and her opinion and people lost it, sending insane tweets and getting bombarded until she actually left Twitter, all right? So something that the book, The Coddling of the American Mind talks about throughout the book is uh, CBT methods, all right? So those of you who don't know, CBT is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, all right? It is one of the best evidence-based therapies. And what it's designed to do is help you to catch cognitive distortions, all right? Cognitive distortions are the crazy lies that your brain tells you, all right? It makes you freak out over things or it makes you have black and white thinking, all right? One of the problems with these outrage mobs is that they are just rage filled with cognitive distortions and no therapist or psychologist, any mental health professional in their right mind would allow you to play into those cognitive distortions. Let me play this scenario out for you, all right? ContraPoint shared her opinion on Twitter, okay? Thousands of people got angry and just freaking out about her. Now imagine one of those people going into a therapist and saying, oh, this, this woman I've never met on Twitter said this thing that I disagree with and I'm so angry. She is an awful person, she's transphobic and everything like that. Now, the therapist or psychologist has one of two options. They can challenge your cognitive distortions or play into them. You tell me which one sounds better. Option A, is that they challenge those thoughts and say, okay, is this person really a bad person? What evidence do you have? They reply and you say, okay, so since they have a different opinion than you, this makes them a bad person? And it causes the person to step back and really question their thoughts, right? And their feelings and their emotions, okay? Option two is a therapist or psychologist playing into the cognitive distortions, right? And saying, you're right. That person has a different opinion than you. They're a bad person. They're an evil person. They shouldn't even be online. That trans woman is actually transphobic and she's destroying everything that the LGBT community has worked for, right? That sounds silly, like you guys, this is a practice that you guys can do. Like I know a lot of people are lacking financially or lacking health insurance. And you might not have the ability to go see a therapist. Get a book and do some research on cognitive behavioral therapy. You can do these things on your own. Like recently, I read an entire book on REBT, which is Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy. And that is another therapy that's all about challenging your thoughts with being rational and logical, all right? So here's, here's the thing. Like when the hate mob comes out, when cancel culture is in full force, the people who participate in it, they, they're either one of two things, all right? They're either blatantly lying, okay? But I choose to be an optimist, or they're extremely ignorant and they don't really understand. So let me read to you one of these tweets, but this is just an example. This was all over Twitter and it happens every single time someone is getting bombarded by the hate mob. But it said this, sorry to see her go, but still, if you're going to be popular, you have to learn how to take criticism better and not let people run you off. Like this is, like I said, it's either a lie or it's complete ignorance. And again, it goes back to that selfish, self-centered way of thinking that we have. People believe like, oh, what are they, what are they, so why, why are they upset? Like, they're just getting criticized. Like, this blows my mind. Like, when it happened to me, like, I was getting death threats, my mom was getting death threats, right? And people are like, you just can't take criticism. Like, what? What? And people try to use attacking people online as criticism, like death threats, name calling, right? Labeling people as transphobic or racist or Nazis. Like, I hate to break it to you, but that is not criticism, okay? Insults do not equal criticism. 
I, I've been replying to more people in my YouTube comments. Like some guy started out his comment to me, you dumb F, right? And then he goes on to say how he disagrees with me. Like think about that for a second. Do you expect anybody to take your criticism seriously when you come out swinging, when you come out punching, right? But here's the other example I wanna give. When you get bombarded by the online hate mob, it's not all criticism. What happens is it's a snowball effect. It starts out something small, like people were going after the tweets that she said, but then, then, it turned into this. Fun ContraPoints fact of the day. If you assume that every one of her patrons contribute the lowest possible tier, ContraPoints makes $228,000 a year from Patreon alone. Then someone says, I think there are better criticisms of Contra than how much she makes on Patreon, which is not to say this can't inform a strong criticism just on its own. Then somebody else replies, hoarding wealth for mostly, if not completely for oneself isn't extremely wrong then? And then they say, a lot of people donate $1. Then somebody else replies, the problem is that nobody realistically needs that much. Maybe if Contra took some and gave the rest to her show, maybe that is a little better. But since we don't know where the money goes, it is assumed that money goes directly back to her. This is another issue with cancel culture. It starts over here and then it turns into something completely different. You see this every single time. Like with what happened with James Charles, you saw it start with, oh, he's a bad friend. He promoted um, a, a competitor's product. Then it turned into he's a sexual predator, right? You're seeing it happen right now. Now that people are all amped up and riled up, they're like, oh, what else can we complain about? And here's the thing, one of the rules of cancel culture, I talked about this in my book, is that you talk about how much money that person makes, all right? And you assume the worst in them, okay? And this, this is also an issue. Like, you're going to constantly be angry in your life if you're constantly assuming the worst. So let's talk about this real quick, okay? Again, I'll play the optimist. Let's say that ContraPoints actually donates a lot of that money to, I don't know, LGBTQ causes, right? We don't know that for certain, but let's say that she does, okay? How would you know? Does she have to disclose that? Well, here's where cancel culture gets you. If she was out there gloating about it, people would say, oh, you're just doing this to get uh, positive attention and things like that. Like Manny MUA and his comeback video, he just had to talk about that. He talked about how he's afraid to talk about the charities he works with because the hate mob will criticize him for that. Like think about that. One of the issues with cancel culture is that oftentimes there's no winning, all right? So anyways, when this happened, um, there are some people who are speaking up about this, such as The Quartering or Chris Raygun, and they talk about, as you can see in these tweets, even though they disagree with her, like they, they think it's messed up what happened, all right? And this is what I really want people to pay attention to. Like, you see so many people as your enemies, but look and see what, what they really think, right? Because you have people like Chris Raygun and The Quartering who Although they disagree with ContraPoints, they would never want her canceled or deplatformed. Yet the people within her own community are trying to do that and labeling her a transphobic. Like you guys, we can disagree with somebody without wanting them to be completely off the platform. All right, so one of the last things that I wanna talk about is, and it's talked about a lot in uh, The Coddling of the American Mind, and it's part of cognitive distortions too, all right? Our brain tells us that everything we feel is true. And if you call someone out on that, they say that you're invalidating their, their feelings, right? Which is absolutely mind blowing. Like if you even took like five minutes of a psychology class, you would know that humans are extremely emotional, irrational beings. So this new kind of thing where people think that all of their feelings need to be validated is nuts. Like if my son is afraid that there's a monster in his closet, why am I gonna go play into that? Right, I'm gonna say, no, there's not. Like what if my son came to me and said, oh my God, dad, you're invalidating my feelings, right? I'd be like, what? 
Now think about this for a second. Like this is something that really bothered me. It's bothered me since the Tati Westbrook and James Charles situation because Gabriel Zamora came out and said like, this isn't a big deal. It's not that big of a deal. So what? He promoted a competitor's brand. And Tati Westbrook went off saying, how dare you invalidate my feelings? Right? Like, you guys, sometimes we need our feelings invalidated. Let's let's play this game, all right? Let's say you're standing in line at a grocery store and somebody walks past you and accidentally bumps your shoulder and you lose it because you feel that that person disrespected you on purpose and they hate you and they're just an evil person, even though it was an accident. Should we play into your feelings like that? Our feelings are not always facts. We feel a lot of ways that are not true, okay? So we need to get out of that mindset like, oh my God, people are invalidating our feelings. Like, what I try to teach people is to check in with yourself because we get so offended when other people try to call us out on it, but we really need to be checking in with ourselves and say, okay, is my emotional reaction to this situation proportional to what just actually happened? And actually, the last thing I wanna talk about is, listen, one of the things that I've seen for years now, and I truly believe it's why the 2016 elections happened the way they did, and why I'm worried going into 2020, it's because we tear ourselves apart from the inside, all right? Like we're all fighting for something, but we just whip each other to th shreds. And you, that's what you see with ContraPoints. Like she is trying to make strides forward with the LGBTQ community, right? And people within her own community are trying to cancel her and deplatform her, even though they should be allying with her and maybe just have conversations rather than losing their mind. And I say this as somebody who is a mental health advocate, an addiction recovery advocate, and all these things, I see it happen all the time. People within the mental health community, like why do you guys think I rebranded? Like mental health has become such a touchy subject, you can't even disagree. A prime example is a few months ago, I made a, a couple videos with my opinions about Suboxone. And oh my God, people actually made videos saying that my opinions are going to get people killed. Like I look at that and, and it's just like, are you serious right now? Are we really being serious? Like, listen, just because we have different opinions doesn't mean we take it to extremes. This is a cognitive distortion called catastrophizing, all right? When we blow things way out of proportion and our mind goes to crazy places, anybody who struggles with anxiety, you know how our brain likes to do that. And it's completely the opposite of cognitive behavioral therapy to play in to those crazy thoughts. So calm down, have disagreements and debates with people without freaking out, all right? Like I saw this happen today and I'm just like, this stuff needs to end. And I'm going to cover it more and more and more. This is a mental health topic because we're never going to solve anything. We're going to live these miserable lives if we keep becoming outraged over the slightest things, like difference of opinion. All right, but anyways, like I said, my brand new book, Canceled Inside YouTube Cancel Culture is out now if you wanna check that out, down in the description, down in the pinned comment down below. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you think other people can learn from it, do me a favor and share it on social media, all right? But if you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody else who supports the channel in other ways, buying my books, buying merch, all that kind of good stuff. I love you all, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.